Quick shout out to HBO for sponsoring this episode. HBO's next must-watch series is Perry Mason that stars Emmy winner Matthew Rees in an origin story for America Fiction's most legendary criminal defense lawyer. Catch up on the series The Washington Post calls superb and Vanity Fair lauds as engrossing and unpredictable. Set in 1930s LA, Mason finds that uncovering the truth means exposing a city full of corruption and everybody is guilty. Co-starring fellow Emmy winners Tatiana Maslany and John Lithgow, Perry Mason airs Sundays at 9 p.m. on HBO and stream it on HBO Max. It still felt really good to see everybody. Like we filmed on my birthday and I was like, yeah, I was working on my birthday, but it was so nice to see everyone and at least like be social and be near people. Rollerblading is to the X Games what Nickelback is to rock. It's just a gross impersonation that is nothing more than just a tragedy to, to experience. Courtney, dumb. Ian, smart. Courtney, dumb. Birds. Ah! <laughs> My God. Ah! Ah! <laughs> it's scary. What does a fish do? Bloop, 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 bloop. I yield my time. Well, hello everybody, and <laughs> welcome to a, a Smosh Cast. A Smosh Cast, I, guys. Like, I think it's been like four weeks since I've been on a Smosh Cast. Uh, yeah, where'd you go? I haven't been I, on in a long time. I've just been, just mainly, just been uh, mainlining crack this whole time. What's Is that what you do with crack? I feel like that's a drug word. Is that an action? A drug, a drug adverb. I don't know. Uh, my crack experience is is not. I'm only an amateur. Very high. It, it is. It means to inject something. Oh, ooh, I wouldn't. Do uh, that. I don't think that works. Yeah, I think you are no. incorrectly doing I'm crack. Good. You know, I think I'm gonna not do crack. Yeah. If it involves, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey guys, what if we all just like didn't do crack? Wouldn't that be nuts? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I think I'm, my eyes are dying. You think your eyes are dying? Yeah, I've been getting so do, like- I'm Do you getting, have macular degeneration? I believe so. My 23 Me said my eyes are going to be getting worse and worse and worse until I die. But I've been getting really bad headaches behind my left eye, like so bad and like getting more and more often. I think it's because it, like I, but well, my left eye is the one with the, the, the tear in the pupil, my coloboma. That's my coloboma. bad eye. My coloboma. Coloboma. And my right eye actually has astigmatism, but that's my bad eye. I haven't been wearing my glasses, obviously, and I don't wear contacts. Also, my glasses ha are like a few years old now. So like my prescription's old. So I, I, I'm going to be going to an eye doctor, but do you, do you remember the character from Lost? There was like an episode where his, he, the headaches it was crazy. Everyone was like, oh God, he's dying. And then they found out that he just needed glasses. Oh, really? That was that was the storyline in, in Lost was that he just needed glasses for one episode. It was yeah. the best storyline. <laughs> it was the best episode of the whole series. And they even like they had to like break a couple pairs of glasses and fuse two different sides together to like help his eyes. And like that was I, I don't remember this. Remember I don't remember that. this episode. It was the it's badass character, like the, the sexy character. They were all sexy. They're all sexy. <laughs> You had like Sawyer who was who was the like prototypical like soap opera male lead. Like he just didn't make any sense in that show. He just looked too pretty. Sawyer, he he was just like he had like stubble and like brown hair, right? And like he had the well, long the long honestly he I kind of have looked Sawyer like Shane. Haircut, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. Okay, so it is the same character. Yeah. That guy needed glasses. Oh, it was him? Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh tough guy needs glasses. So cute. Oh no. Well, that's why I don't wear glasses anymore. Now I'm you're a, a nerd. That was his character arc. You stopped. <laughs> you're no, a nerd. I just, I just don't use it for podcasts because I could see you guys so closely. Oh, nice. Well, that's cool. So your eyes are dying. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it sounds like, and you know, being the med medical professional that I am, isn't that migraine? Is that a migraine? Like, do you are you have sensitivity to light? Not really. Not really sensitivity to light because like. I'll be I'll be in the sun tanning, have a oh. migraine or whatever, like a bad headache, and lay down and be tanning with my eyes closed, and it'll be like going away. Do you get nauseous? No, it's just 
mm. really bad back of the left eye. You should probably, yeah, you should probably change your prescription because I, I I'm had going. like, because I was getting like eye strain when, whenever I'd be playing video games for like a long time. Yeah, like and late at, how late often night. we're on our phones. Like, mm-hmm. do you get the pain looking at things up close or far away? Close, but I do have bad vision where I can't read things far away. So it's like I definitely have noticeably bad vision. Well, just for the people that are that are tuning in that didn't read the title, I just want to say we will be doing a very hardcore debate very soon. Uh, I just wanted to let them know that we're not just going to be rambling. There was there is Did, a debate coming up soon. Yeah, we're very excited. Did you want to talk out about at all about um, our social distance shoot? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. So we were all very excited to get back into a sort of a regular shoot. We also want to keep people alive and as safe as possible. So we we kind of devised this way of of doing uh, studio shoots again where mm-hmm. we're distanced from each other. Everyone's wearing masks. Wearing masks, taking tests beforehand, quarantining. So everybody, everybody on set has been quarantining or taking the tests. We had, we had planned on going back to the studio a week earlier but uh, you guys did your part uh, taking part in the protest. Thank you very much. Yeah. And it cost like, us a couple of weeks of production, but. Yeah. But. For the cause. I can't. It's like, it's like, look, I can't be like, we can't be angry at you guys for for supporting this obviously very important cause. But that's but but obviously, like, this is this is something we're taking very seriously, like, yeah. you know, with with the with the COVID of it all. And yeah, it all went, it all went very well. It was nice seeing your, your dumb faces again in person. I feel like we just had so much dumb improv because it's been so long was, since we and were everyone's able to like- everyone's crazy from quarantine. Yeah, like it had been so long since any of us have like played against each other. So yes. I feel like our, our improv just got super weird a lot because we just mm-hmm. wanted to- I feel like we just wanted to talk to each other. Yeah, I feel like my acting is different. You know, I, the last few months have changed me. Where You've just I been Tom like, Hanks talking to a ball. Except for the ball is my phone. Just talking to my phone. Nobody's FaceTiming with me. It's just my only friend. The the one, Every Panda Express that we shot, the, they're, they're editing the cut right now. It's so funny. Everyone's just loopy. It's so funny. Yeah. It's great. What about you, Shane? How did you like the studio shoot? Did you miss us? It, it, was, uh, it was interesting <laughs> because it felt... Damien summed it up pretty well. He's like, it's when you end up at school during summer break and you're like, wait, I feel this feels weird. Like it, mm-hmm. it feels like you never left, but it also feels like it's been five years. Like it feels like I'm coming up on the studio and and look, I'm playing Last of Us right now and I can't help but uh, compare it. There's a lot of weeds growing around the studio now. Yeah. Huge. And I'm like, I'm opening the door to the studio just expecting some monster to come out at me. Um, and it's just Tim with a beard. And it's just, it's just Tim, Tim with a beard. and you just stab him in the neck with Tim, a shiv. Guys, I, I, I don't know if you guys have seen this for the those listening, but Tim doesn't wear a mask like most people. He wears like a gas mask. Full like on. Like a hardcore, he looks like a character in Last of Us who's about to just take out some uh, some fools. Yeah. yeah. But he looks like a badass because he's wearing a vest and a painter's mask. Yeah, it's he awesome. looks it's like a Fallout character. It's also funny because he's slating all of our shoots. Yes. He's the person that goes like, scene 11, take two. But because the mask muffles everything he says, like a lot, it's like. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. It's very yeah. great. It was really good to see, like, uh, even if it was like a skeleton crew, which means like the minimum possible amount of people needed, it still felt really good to see everybody. Like, we filmed on my birthday, and I was like, yeah, I was working on my birthday, but it was so nice to see everyone and at least like be social and be near people. And we're doing a we're doing a social distance uh, pit shoot soon too, yeah. unscripted. Mm-hmm. So that'd be yep. cool. We're, we're we're trying to get back to it. Just yeah, we'll be a little, we might be a little bit closer to each other, but we're still going to be as safe as we possibly can. Yeah. Quarantine, uh, and obviously hard, masks until we're like literally rolling. Yeah, and obviously like we can't be spitting water everywhere. So I think we're bringing back the slide whistle for try not to laugh. But shall we get into the the topic at hand? Let's get into it. Uh, right. So this is going to be a very very serious debate show. We've picked out some topics for you guys, and it will be a one v one. Uh, debate with uh, one person being moderator. They will each get one minute to state their side. The other person will get one minute to state their side. And then 
the person will be given a one minute, each person will be given a one minute rebuttal chance to take down their opponent's viewpoints and win. The moderator will then decide who won the debate. And if the moderator can't decide, we're going to bring in our wonderful, our wonderful Kevin from heaven producer, producer Kevin from heaven. (laughs) I was going to say he died a week ago, but that's just Kevin is alive. But we call him Kevin from Heaven because he's he's an angel. I don't think you've ever yeah. called me that before, ever. It's literally my first time saying that ever in my life. <laughs> well, it's your nickname now. All right, thank you. Great. Heaven, Kevin. So Kevin will be the the ultimate decider if 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 the moderator is failing to come to a consensus. Shall we get onto it? I'm ready to fight. All right. Well, too bad because the first debate <laughs> is, <the> Shane, <laughs> is Shane versus myself. So Courtney, would you would you like to begin? Absolutely. I'm gonna get my timer ready to go. First topic. Is reading still cool versus is reading not cool? Shane advocating for reading is still cool. Ian advocating for reading is not cool. Who shall begin? Oh, we go I'll with let, Shane. I'll let Ian and, start. Oh, Ian's going oh, to begin. Oh no, no, you oh, you choose, sad. Courtney. Uh, Ian, uh, Shane, since your name is first on the on the Google Great. Doc, I'm going to have you begin, and your minute starts now. Reading is incredibly cool. Uh, what is more cool than gaining knowledge? Uh, for instance, I'm reading a book right now called Stamp from the Beginning. It's about the history and prevalence of racism in our country and its impact uh, and how it bleeds into every action that we do every day and how it's part of our system and structure and how we need to take that down. Uh, I would love my opponent to tell me that reading that book is a bad idea, that reading that book is not good. Uh, Reading, it's how we pass knowledge from one to the other. And by saying reading is not cool is the desire to suppress knowledge and to suppress education, there is nothing better than it. It is it's simply, uh, <laughs> it is what connects us all. Uh, to not think reading is cool is probably the most offensive thing Ten seconds. on the planet. Uh, I, I could think it's it's everything. To not think re- reading is cool is sexist, racist, um, bigoted <laughs> in every aspect. So good luck to my opponent. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, Ian, your minute starts now. Re- a book is outdated technology. Do you see people riding around on a penny farthing bicycle? No, they figured out better ways <laughs> to make a bicycle. Okay, it's it's outdated. It, yeah, sure, it was the hottest, coolest thing a thousand years ago. But we found better ways of communicating. We've ha- found better ways of sharing ideas, sharing thoughts, sharing experiences. You can't you can't get the whole feeling of something out of just text. You it, you miss some of the nuance. Uh, if you wanna talk about something that teaches you racism, there's plenty of movies that do that, right? There's plenty of documentaries. The 13th being a good one. Uh, when They See Us is a very popular one as well. Both those by Ava DuVernay or however you pronounce her name. But I actually never Ten heard second. her name being said. Uh, uh, books, old, movies, television, good. Uh, f- you, Shane. Oh my god! Okay, Um, so we're gonna have our rebuttals. Both are valid, I guess. You know, one is saying that one is educational. One is saying there's more modern and easier access ways to find such education. Um, Shane, are you ready for your rebuttal? Sure. All right, your minute starts now. If we're talking about uh, convenience and advancement, nothing has advanced past books because say, for instance, the big one hits here in LA, uh uh-oh, electricity's out. You have lost all media except for, uh uh-oh, you have a book. And that, nothing can stop that, uh, except water perhaps. But you avoid water, you're gonna be fine. Whereas electricity can short circuit at any moment, you can lose power, you don't have a backup, you're, you're done. Knowledge is gone then, whereas a book, all you need is your eyes. You need good eyes like me, unlike Courtney. Hey. <laughs> uh, 25 seconds left. All right. Oh, I still got plenty of time. That's awesome. We're also talking about volume here, right? Uh, you've got plenty of great documentaries. I don't disagree that documentaries are also cool, but we're talking about reading here. Uh, but you're talking about volume. A documentary is roughly two to three hours. A book can compress uh, tens of hours of knowledge that you're not going to sit there and watch a movie for for 24 hours, but you can read a book piecemeal by piecemeal every day well, and keep up. getting more knowledge. It can be back so oh, much. Time's up, that. sir. Oh, Excuse time's me. Up. Sorry. Ian, are you ready for your rebuttal? Yeah, sure. Okay, begin. Okay. Um, well, this whole idea of you of, of like <laughs> getting knowledge during a certain amount of time 
goes against your your feelings, Shane, because uh, when I get a book, it takes me months to finish. Okay, and, <laughs> and with with a documentary, they can get they can compress those ideas down into something that I could enjoy and and take what I need from it within a matter of two hours. I can't read a book in two hours. I can learn about 500 things before I before I learn one thing from a book because I just cannot. I get three pages in and I'm just like, it, no. And also, have you ever heard of uh, the Library of Alexandria? <laughs> Guess what? Those were books and they burned and we lost that information. So Ten the seconds. same could happen to books. Yeah, that's right. They're combustible. Guess what isn't combustible? A movie on a server that exists all around the world, bitch. Oh. I yield my, my time. Goodness. You. <laughs> you. You had one second to yield. Um, <laughs> wow. All right. Excellent <laughs> arguments <laughs> from both sides. I think it's very valid that both of you guys said with uh, with which resource is easier to lose uh, and with how much time you can gain information. Personally, I think I'm surprised. I think Ian's argument is very valid that there's other forms of media. And there's other ways to find education. Um and quicker ways to learn it, and it's more portable and less less flammable. So, uh, Kevin, would you agree or disagree? I, well, it's uh, less it's less flammable unless you're talking about the old celluloid movies. Those are very flammable. Sorry. You yielded your time, sir. Kevin, uh, I actually do agree. Ian made a really good point at the end, uh, where it was about condensing of time for information. Shane had valid points, but you gotta get the information quick. It's 2020, not 1820. Yeah, in the age of information. You gotta, you gotta get it quick, you know. You know what I'm saying? All right. You heard it from Smosh, guys. Reading is bad. Don't do it. <laughs> reading is good, just on other devices or reading subtitles on a movie. Just support Jeff Bezos <laughs> and get that Kindle, guys. Get yeah. that Kindle. Um, but if you're going to read, if you're gonna have like books on your bookshelf, bookcase, whatever you call it, just to re read them. It's not cool Absolutely. to just have books love, you haven't read. I love reading right. books with a papers with paper in my hand. I love turning the pages. I like that it's this little thing. Like it's it feels more meaningful to carry a book around with me than my phone. You know, so I do True. fully. I understand both sides. I think I was honestly the perfect mediator for this. That's so next. Point one, point one for Ian. Point so one. For I think Ian. I'm gonna quit now. You get one piece of sour skinny. I'm gonna, skinny I'm gonna retire point. from debate. This next debate pits. Courtney versus Shane. Well, I'm off to the a hot start. <laughs> <laughs> the topic is blades versus skateboard. Rollerblades, that is. Who's going to be taking what side? I'm rollerblades. Skateboard. Courtney is defending rollerblades. Shane is defending skateboarding. Since Shane began last time, I'm going to have Courtney begin. All right. And... You may start now. As someone who purchased rollerblades during quarantine and has been rollerblading around my neighborhood as a form of exercise, I can say that rollerblading is very convenient not only for fun, but also for transportation. When you're riding rollerblades, it's your two feet separated. You can go whatever speed you want. You don't need to worry about grinding or ollieing to get to point A to point B. And you can have your shoes tied on your shoulder for when you <laughs> want to go into a store, you just take them off and get in. People don't look at rollerblades and see that kid's a rebel. He's not supposed to be skating around here. Karens aren't going to get mad at someone with rollerblades. And you they're more graceful. And as you've seen on TikTok, the rollerblade ancestor roller skates are having a comeback. People enjoy walking around and feeling like they're floating. And sometimes they put cool music to it. Skateboarding's old news. They've already been doing that, but it's not as cool because that skateboard, skateboards are, they smell bad. And, <laughs> and that's time. Oh. That's time. <laughs> Shane, are you ready? I yes, I think I'm ready. I have no idea what her argument was. I don't. Were you just that. filling time at the end? No. <laughs> All right. I'm trying. Shane, you may start now. Yes. Well, see, you're not allowed to bring uh, roller skating into this. Rollerblading is the Mac and me to ET. Uh, <laughs> it is. You're talking about rollerblading is to is like the Rollerblading is to the X Games what Nickelback is to rock. It's just a gross impersonation that is nothing more than just a tragedy to, to experience. Uh, and I'll give you two words, Tony Hawk. 
Name a famous rollerblader. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's not Tony Hawk. It is not Tony Hawk at all. Rollerblading <laughs> existed for like five years in the 90s. And then we were all like, yeah, we're done with that. I swear, uh, uh, friggin', uh, what's it called? Tamagotchis are remembered with more fonder memories than rollerblading. <laughs> rollerblading is just, it's its the device used to establish bad guys in 90s high school movies. It's like, they're the bad guys. They rollerblade because they suck. And that's, and that's wow, time. Wow, that was quick. Strong arguments on both sides. Uh, Courtney, are you ready for your rebuttal? Yes. Courtney Miller? You may, you may begin now. At a skate park, there's no discriminating over which which type of athletes are on the skate park. Everyone has a chance to roll around in the skate park. Like at Venice Beach, you see so many people rollerblading around on those on the walk. Why are you laughing at me, Shane? <laughs> also, skateboards are very well known to have not very smooth wheels. And when you're rolling over bumps and stuff, your feet feel like they're getting tickled. And it's like... It doesn't, it doesn't feel nice when you're skateboarding on the street. Rollerblades have gel wheels and they're much smoother for a much smoother ride. And it, do, it, it they're part of your feet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they are safer because on rollerblades, you're not as apt to be uh, grinding and doing crazy tricks and getting yourself hurt. Rollerblades, it's usually you're just running, but it's faster because you're gliding. Skateboarders are just are always causing trouble. There's always signs that say no skateboarding. Not as many signs as people say no rollerblading because rollerblading isn't as much of a problem. They're not and, as destructive. And and that's your time. Wow, wow, <laughs> strong strong rebuttal. From Thank you, Courtney Miller. Thank you, Shane Top. Are you ready for your rebuttal? Sure. You may begin. Oh yeah, rollerblading so much easier on your feet. Why don't you argue for training wheels and bumpers in the bowling alley as well, okay? It, it, no, it's about being cool. It's about challenging yourself and skateboarding is so much more challenging. There's way more tricks you can do. You tried to accuse uh, skateboarders of being bad people at one point there. Yeah, um, yes. Well, I noticed there was a famous video from a couple weeks ago where a ton of skateboarders all formed and went to a protest uh, for Black Lives Matter. So if you're saying those people are bad people, yes. well, hello, Donald Trump. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, once again, I, I think I could have come out here and just said Tony Hawk. That's all I had to say is Tony Hawk, guys. Tony Hawk. All right. And also Tony Hawk Pro Skater, best video game. Come on. Name a good rollerblading video game. Uh, oh. <laughs> I yield my time. And your time is up. You. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, well, well um, Shane, may I remind you, this wasn't an argument of is skateboarding or rollerblading cool? It was an argument of blades versus skates. Skateboards, that is. You know, I, I, I just want to point out one of the first points that Courtney made, which very, which confused me quite a lot. She said, you can ride to a store and then on rollerblades and take them off and walk in. What are you walking on? I told your you bare tying feet? my shoes. You tied your, your shoes onto feet? your shoulder. Did you hear what I? You didn't listen to my whole argument because I said. Are you have saying your you shoes carry? With you. you carry shoes. You see those with cool people wherever? with their shoelaces tied together and they're slung over their shoulder. And then when they take the blades off, they put those shoes on. And then they tie the nope. rollerblades so them over their shoulder. Well, then I've you need to go that. outside more or watch more movies. What movie are you referring to? Xanadu and Xanadu only. That's the eighties. That's the skate roller skates. Same vehicle. No, mm, yes. no, not. I no. don't care. The arguments are done. Ian. You're comparing Pick a Kia to a Lamborghini. You're right. <laughs> the debate's uh, over. It's it's this one's a little tough for me. I'm gonna have to throw it to Kevin from Heaven. What do you think, Kevin from Heaven? Uh, that was also hard. I mean, I'm a I'm an avid roller skater, um, but I also skateboard too. So yeah, <laughs> Shane did definitely argue that there was a lot of cool things about uh, skateboarding and how rollerblading is not cool. Courtney. Mm -hmm. I felt like you had some all right arguments, but I felt like a lot of them fell flat. Like uh, as an avid roller skater, taking your shoes off to go into like a 7-Eleven, the worst thing ever. I just walk in with my skates and get yelled at and kicked out. So <laughs> I, I will have to say, Shane, uh, you did, you won me over, especially when you talked about Tony Hawk. But also I'm, I'm upset at you. You forgot the game uh, Jet Set Radio was an awesome rollerblading game. Jet Set oh. Radio was Whoa. sick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Tony Hawk and the skateboarders showing up during BLM. You did not see rollerbladers going to the BLM protests. So. No, because they're too busy trying to tie their shoes that. together. 
So I, oh. I, I give it. I give this one to Shane. Not nice. you deserve it. Those points. I've been skateboarding my whole life. Like you can't. Shane, would you like to take this next one? Hello and welcome to the uh, National Bates. You're watching C-SPAN. I'm your moderator, Kevin Gurkis. We have our debaters here. We have Ian Hecox uh, presenting that Friends was a bad show versus Courtney mm -hmm. Miller saying that Friends is a good show. And now we should say that the way this is this is presented is saying that it is currently a good show, that it holds up as well. So, uh, Ian, would you like to begin? When I go on a dating app and somebody lists Friends as their best show, I know immediately that, I, I'm immediately suspicious of their taste because there's much better things out there on TV than Friends. So I would have to assume then that that person is just an idiot. Friends must must just appeal to the lowest common denominator. It's it's and really like okay, even with even without that said, it has a laugh track. Any show with a laugh track, any time that you're being told when to laugh, is just not great. Does Friends have a laugh track? It has a laugh track, right? I think it's got a laugh track. Yeah, fashion choices in the show, uh, they do not hold up. They don't hold up anymore. I'm sorry. And that uh, is time. Okay. Courtney Miller, uh, it is your turn. We are not arguing that Friends is the best show. We're arguing whether it's good or not. And I will say that it is good for several reasons. It was ahead of its time, and we're saying whether it would held up. It doesn't necessarily hold up in a lot of ways, but it did normalize some unconventional things as, as lesbian couples, trans parents. And as they did make fun of them in, in certain light, but at least it was normalizing their existence as well as the characters had a lot of progression in like women becoming powerful uh, people in business. Like Rachel began as a runaway bride who was then a uh, waitress at a cafe. Then she became an executive at a fashion company. Monica becoming an owner of a catering company. Powerful women owning a large apartment, taking care of themselves, owning the apartment where everyone came and it, it, it normalizes living in New York. And it's, it's a cool thing to see New York and from the just common people who are all very different from each other. And yes, there's people like Ross who are problematic and annoying, but every cast needs that annoying problematic character to bounce off of. And that is time. All right, uh, it is time for your 30 second rebuttals. One 30 minute. seconds? One minute. Oh, it is a one minute rebuttal. All right, Ian, your one minute rebuttal begins now. Funny that you would mention diversity. Could you um, tell me uh, what, what makes the cast so diverse, Courtney? Because I, I, I mean, what, what is it? Joey comes from an Italian descent. Is that is that the diversity you're talking about? It's 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 not diverse at all, and it it is it is you would not see a cast like that in a new sort of show. They've they've progressed beyond that, and also showing women in in power. Like we didn't learn anything about their jobs. They just said oh, she works at this thing and we're all like, cool. We don't see her actually crushing it at her job. We just see them hanging out in their house or in the coffee shop. We never see them doing their jobs. We never see them owning the workplace. No, don't shake your head at me. No, this is this is what I know from the eight episodes that I've seen. <laughs> it, it's, it's always just, they're always just in their apartment. And that is time. They're, they're in Courtney, your rebuttal begins. Now, there is a lack of racial diversity in the main cast, but so do so many TV shows today still. So that's something that clearly the world is still working on. And the diversity that I did explain was uh, it's like sexual orientation, as well as, you know, being trans at that. The, was it Chandler's mom or dad? Um, and it is not true. They are always being shown at work. Rachel is shown having to fire people, deal with problematic ass assistants, attractive assistants, very real issues that people deal with all the time in business. You always see Chandler at work. He he works his way up in business and he's also an executive. They're not always in their apartment. And even when they're in their apartment, they're still killing it running. Monica is being a very organized, powerful person, taking care of her friends. And yes, there's still shows that are even more problematic than this one. I yield my time, f you. All right. Um, well, this is certainly uh, an interesting one. Uh, I, I, unfortunately, Ian, although I do personally think Friends is a just piece of shit, uh, <laughs> you presented no reasons. You simply just kept calling it a bad show and said that anyone who likes it is also dumb. You insulted its laugh track, even though multicam sitcoms, that's kind of the thing. Um, Doesn't have to be. What multicam sitcom doesn't have a laugh track? Why does it? 
that's no excuse. <laughs> Courtney actually presented some arguments, whereas you did not. Despite myself thinking Friends is just a <laughs> steaming pile, uh, I I give this a, a point to Courtney. <laughs> I understand. Like I said, I've, I've, I don't know how many episodes I've seen but they always just seem to be in their apartment. And I'm like, where do they make all that money? I don't ever see it. <laughs> oh, it's very unrealistic that they can afford those apartments. And they try to justify it with like, well, it was my grandmother, so it's rent controlled. But it's like oh. not a good show. I hate Ross. It's, but I won. Thank you. I'd be curious. I'm actually curious because people are constantly talking about all the things that don't hold up or are problematic now from, from older shows. I'd be more curious what shows do hold up because I feel like that's a much smaller yeah. category. Yeah. Very true. I, wonder, I would love to look into that. The Wire freaking holds up. The Wire is so freaking good. Go but I mean like it. sitcoms, like comedies especially. Yeah. because yeah. They, comedy, comedy ages the fastest. Yeah, because people make fun of what they don't understand, right? Mm -hmm. What they find ridiculous. Well, and it's also like people find comedy in things that make people uncomfortable. So mm -hmm. where like and gay couples- fun of each other. Yeah, like gay yeah. like gay couples, trans issues, those things made people uncomfortable in the 90s. So there was comedy there. That's why, you know, a lot of people have, have trouble looking back at some of the stuff on like Seinfeld. Also, where do all the babies go after they're born? You see them, the parent, the person is pregnant in Friends and then they have a baby and then you see like maybe three out of the rest of the 300 episodes. Woof. They just are like, oh, the baby's with grandma. I don't know. It's not here. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> how That's just how pregnant? shows are. Don't make them have a baby if you're not going to have the baby there. Like, I know they could have, they could have pulled the whole house. <laughs> All right. Sorry. So, um, well, that I, I give that one to Courtney as well. Courtney, could you take this next one? This one is Ian versus Shane. Birds are scarier versus fish are scarier. Mm -hmm. Ian mm -hmm. is advocating for birds, Shane is advocating for fish. Nice. I'm going to give Shane. Uh, I'm going to give Ian the first argument. Are you ready? Yes. And your time begins now. Think about the things that scare you the most. Sound. Sound is such a. It's such a uh, like an instigator for fear. Think about those horror movies that use sound to instill fear in you. <laughs> That's just one of them, but there are many. The sound of the chainsaw in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Sound is so important to f that it plays into fear. Birds. Ah! <laughs> My God. Ah! Ah! <laughs> it's scary. What does a fish do? I yield my time. You have 10 seconds left. That's it? All right. Got 10 seconds. Ah! <laughs> ah! Or, or a peacock. Ah! Time. Oh my God. That's just putting, that's hell on me to edit. You know that. <laughs> that was half of your argument was just sounds. Okay, Shane, are you ready for your argument? Of course. Your time begins now. Sounds are scary, but what's scarier is lack of sound, silence. What's even more scary and the ultimate fear that all of us have deep down is the fear of the unknown. And we are unaware of over 90% of the Earth's ocean, which is where fish dwell. That is their home. They live in the unknown. They live in the depths. They live where we cannot breathe. They live in our death. They are demons. Every single one, even a koi fish is a demon. <laughs> They're just waiting. You can't see them. That's what's so scary. You and, and you're dealing with thalassophobia on top of it. The, you're jumping down into the depths. You can't see where they are. They can see you. They can feel you. They can sense you. And they're coming for you. The, the creature from Cloverfield, Cthulhu, Jaws, Godzilla, all fish, all live in the ocean. Oh, time. Wow. Very interesting points from both of you. Uh, Ian, are you ready for your rebuttal? Absolutely. Your time begins now. Shane, we're not talking about ocean being scary. We're talking about fish. And the things in the ocean that scare me are not fish. They're sharks. They're octopi. They're jellyfish, which are not fish. Those are not fish. <laughs> yeah, I guess Why a shark are birds is scary? a fish. Why are birds scary? All right. Girl. That's true. Sharks are fish. <laughs> are birds scary? Still, birds Sir. are scary because they can come at you fast 
and without with like without look fish uh, birds are so dumb you can't you can't anticipate what they're gonna do you've seen that magpie swooping video they're crazy <laughs> they're freaking crazy and they are descendants from dinosaurs mother mm. dinosaurs the ultimate fear inducing thing they still have that Ten drive minutes. for killing in them it's bred into them they've evolved but they still have <laughs> that instinct to rip you apart and kill you i yield my time <laughs> <"Fuck> you <laughs> Shane, are you ready for your rebuttal? Yes. The time begins now. I'd like to thank my opponent opponent for naming a bunch of terrifying fish. Sharks and octopi are both um, in the fish no, category. Octopus, octopus are not fish. Sorry, it is not your time. Uh, they're okay. As as dinosaurs are not technically birds. Dinosaur. If dinosaurs were so tough, they would have survived the comets. But you know who did? Fish. They survived. There's plenty of species that are super old. And man, they're all they're all coming for you. How many birds kill people per year versus sharks? Okay, sharks are crazy, and they're coming for you. All right, they take people out, man. They're huge. Uh, the biggest bird is maybe what the uh, the uh, uh, California osprey. It's it's what you know got a seven foot wingspan. That's pretty great. Uh, a shark can get up to fifteen feet, and that's just that's just pure metal crunching jaws of terror. Fish are also uh, from hell. Oh, that's your time. <laughs> Fish are from hell. Okay, valid valid arguments from both sides. Uh, excellent bringing up of sharks. Uh, Ian, you could have argued that we have less, we have less opportunity to come across a shark, but that was not in your argument today. Also, not um, a lot of people. Not a lot of people die from sharks. How many people die from birds? Do well. Do you remember the most dangerous animal in? In Australia? Sir, you yielded your time. It's in a bird. Australia. It's the cassowary. However, Shane had a very strong argument. Uh, sharks are very dangerous. Octopuses freak me out. Uh, Kevin, what do you think? Yeah, I kind of agree. Ian Ian had a strong argument with the dinosaurs, but he missed it. Talking about cassowaries or ostriches or the big, the big birds. Those ones that'll gore you. Uh, Shane did bring in Cthulhu and Godzilla, which I don't think are fish. <laughs> So that is kind of a, a negative. We don't know. Uh, true, true. Wait, isn't Cthulhu like an octopus face? He's like an octopus. He's like an octopus. He's an elder god. Uh, fish. Okay. Uh, yeah, the octopus are mollusks. But so I, fine, I will have fine. to say, Shane, I, I didn't have an opinion on either of them to begin with. And Shane yeah. made me feel a little bit more terrified of the ocean, just slightly more. Though I don't know where he got his facts from. I didn't fact check him. So um, somebody snopes Shane on this one, please. Mm -hmm. All right. So Shane, you do get the point. <sighs> Thank you. Sorry, Ian. I should have spent more time on the dinosaur connection. And you. manipulate us, yeah. Dinosaurs were so tough, they would have survived the meteor. The, I mean, Not like, so tough. But birds can fly. Some they of them survive. survived, Lots I guess. Like The birds are descendants of them, right? I'm like more likely to come across an angry survived. bird than an angry shark. You know? Did the fish even survive? I know the alligators survived and sharks survived. Well, I guess plenty well, that's of right, things, sharks plenty of Plenty I of keep fish. forgetting sharks are fish. Yeah, it's crazy. Because well, because like dolphins are mammals, so yeah, you know. So yeah, I understand. I get them mixed up. All right, welcome back. <laughs> this next argument is going to be: Are hot Cheetos food, or are they not food? Courtney is in favor of them being food. Shane believes they are not food. Shane, you may begin. Uh, you see, food is 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 one thing, but. Uh, hot Cheetos are not technically in the category of food. The Department of Health puts uh, hot Cheetos under the same category as all drugs, uh, steroids, uh, crack cocaine, heroin. This is the category that hot Cheetos fits in uh, due to the extreme effects it has on the body. Now, hot Cheetos, however, are the only good drug. They're a drug that uh, increases your logic, uh, your charisma, your strength. I ate a hot Cheeto the other day and threw a smart car <laughs> at a building. <laughs> and uh, it was an empty building. They needed to destroy oh it. God. They were taking it down. And so I threw a smart car at it and blew it up. And the, the construction worker was like, thank you so much. You just saved a whole what? day of work for us. And I was like, no problem, man. It's hot Cheetos. They What they do is they take, uh, they find hot Cheetos from a certain area of the savannah. They extract uh, a safe amount. I'm sorry, Shane. I'm going to have to stop you right there. I just... Yeah. I, even if you weren't running out of time, I would have still stopped you. <laughs> okay. Thank that you. was, 
the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. We are all now stupider because of you. Thank you for quoting Billy Madison. It had <laughs> to happen at some point. <laughs> Paraphrase that terribly. I never, I never thought we would need a fact checker on these debates, but I think next time we, we will have to hire one. Okay, Courtney? Allow me to take you on a journey. There's this restaurant in Long Beach where they serve you gourmet mac and cheese topped with egg, bacon, and you guessed it, flaming hot Cheetos. Restaurants would not legally be able to serve drugs in a restaurant, uh, not of the caliber of cocaine or crack. Also, if you were to look at the definition of food, it is something that is consumed, is edible to gain nutrients from uh, and processed through the body. A bag of fire flaming hot Cheetos has nutrition facts on the back. Therefore, you gain <laughs> nutrition. If anything is edible, you can consider it food. If it, it comes from cheese, not cheetahs, <laughs> Shane, it is dehydrated cheese. And if you put it, it's a topping on mac and cheese and it's gotta be edible and it's freaking delicious and it makes anything that you eat that makes your poop feel bad later, it's gotta be damn good. And that's your time. Thank you, Courtney. <laughs> Shane, come on, give me something to work with. Shane, are you ready for your rebuttal? It, it was roughly, I think, around... 20,000 BC that Lucifer and God made a pact. They needed to make something that was both the encapsulation of purity and evil. And that thing was hot Cheetos. Uh, hot Cheetos predate man uh, and, and and predates food also. Uh, you know, God created drugs before food. And, and so hot Cheetos was the king of them. And I'd like to also point out that, that restaurants do serve drugs. Uh, Krispy Kreme's a thing. Those donuts are just... <laughs> I'm addicted. I'm hooked. Uh, and also, they do serve a uh, one of those long johns where they they inject it with black tar heroin, just filled to the brim with black what? tar heroin, and it's so good. Anyways, my point earlier was they extract uh, hot cheetah blood and use that, and they 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 uh, dehydrate that to turn that into the dust that they use on Cheetos. <laughs> and what differentiates hot Cheetos from from Cheetos? And you're referring to Cheetos. Shane, I'm sorry you're out of time. Uh, but the hotness is the drug. Well, Courtney, I don't know how you're going to match up against this. It's a, it's a tough one. Are you ready? Yeah. Shane, I'd like, I love that you brought up the hotness because when creating a chip or, or any kind of snack and you want it to be spicy, what do they I incorporate, would you say? It would be, yeah, that's right, chili peppers of some kind. If that's included in hot peppers, not hot cheetah blood that's how you get spicy and if a chili pepper is involved then it's definitely food at the very least from that sore detail you know when you eat the bottom the bottom of cheese it's in a bag or it's just the crumbs that's powder that's basically cheetos it's just powdered cheese and cheeses are not they are edible and they are food and cheetos blood is illegal in the u.s you know that i yield my time to you <laughs> Illegal like a drug. Wow. <clears throat> um this is this is a pretty easy one. I mean, I guess I just I mean, I, there's nothing else that I really have to say. I'm going to have to give this one to Shane. Oh my god, what are you talking about? Ian, you were Thanks. telling him. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It goes to Courtney. <gasps> Sorry. Shane, Shane, be ashamed wow. of yourself. Should be ashamed of yourself. This is a. I'll never be we're trying to. Truth. We're trying to create In the a age respectable. Of information. Yeah, we're we trying to create to a correct. respectable uh, debate show, and you come in here with your shenanigans, and think you can just <laughs> spread lies. I'm only talk. I'm only. I'm only telling the truth here. I'm a truth warrior. Yeah, Some we really do need. That. We really do need you to get fact checked. If anybody listening to this can fact check Shane on all this too, please. Yeah, I'm yeah. really not sure about the cheetah thing. I just I, don't know. I think the thing that I want to know the most is drugs were were created by God before food. Yes, <laughs> that's a bold claim, sir. You really yeah. need to sort out your priorities. You know so, what like, I mean? the Garden of Eden was <laughs> all crack before. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the forbidden yes. fruit was uh, a PCP. nugget of weed. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, welcome back to the uh, annual debates. Uh, thank you for coming to this boiler room in the back of a Payless. Hello. Uh, I am here with Ian Hecox defending uh, at-home shoots versus Courtney Miller defending studio shoots as 
Uh, some of you listeners may or may not know, uh, we in these past couple months have been shooting from home, filming whole sketches ourselves, and then having editors piece it all together. And now we're back to shooting in the studio together a little bit. So we'll see which one is ultimately better. I am your moderator, Bus Bonson. Uh, Courtney, <laughs> would you like to begin? When you think of a shoot at a studio, you immediately, immediately picture the crew. That is a large group of people all working together to make sure the shoot moves keeps going smoothly, and that's their job. Sh- filming in a studio creates more job stability, and in, in, in general, more jobs when you have a full crew, including freelancers and art department. Um, you're also getting more social interaction. It's mentally healthy for you. And when you have a crew, aka a cameraman or a shredder who is as handsome as Kevin Heaven, you definitely don't have to worry about tech when you're just acting. Uh, when you're at home working by yourself, you have to worry about sound, about how the set looks, about uh, what, whether the line is funny or not. You have to worry about all these things that will distract you from giving your best performance. And you're alone in an apartment, you don't even know if your best performance is your best performance because you're by yourself and you're going crazy and you miss your friends and you just want to be hugged every once in a while. And sometimes you really miss those lunches where you just get to like sit in the green. Time. Uh, uh, Ian, you may begin now. Where did we all start in creating content? <laughs> Where did we all begin? (laughs) In our homes. Every once in a while, somebody needs to go back to their roots. They need to go back to see where they came from. The at-home shoots allowed that. It brought us all back to what was truly important. Gave us a look into a 360 view of what it takes to create content, which is important. And it gives you very important perspective on on making content so that you could then respect the others that put in a lot of work when we do get back into studio shoots. Helps boil everything down and- And uh, time. F- you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that uh, Nokia commercial, Ian. Uh, Courtney, Welcome. your rebuttal begins now. While I do appreciate where Smosh came from, as well as the hard work that a lot of solo YouTubers do when they're doing a lot of things, even the most successful YouTubers will hire an editor who's better at that job than they are. But that, even that can be done working from home. But what I'm talking about is teamwork and being able to work well with others. And when you are in a crew surrounded by people, you bond, you, you learn how to allow other people's opinions or expertise to step in and, and it's a good building block to be a good employee and have good work ethic. And how much time do I have left? 15 seconds. I just drew a blank. Also, who doesn't want to look at Tim sometimes doing the little clack thing? Oh, God. (laughs) It is Ian's turn for rebuttal. Begins now. Certainly. As you can see, (laughs) Ian Smart, Courtney Dumb. Ian Smart, Courtney Dumb. Ian Smart, (laughs) Courtney Dumb. Ian Smart, Courtney Dumb. Ian Smart, Courtney Dumb. Ian Smart, Courtney Dumb. Ian Smart, (laughs) Courtney Dumb. I yield my time. F*** you. (laughs) Now... Ian this, Smart. Uh, your time, you've yielded your time, sir. Courtney Dumb. What Ian has just presented is a piece of information that I think is very important that I did not consider before, which was <laughs> that clearly at-home shoots for the past couple months have driven Ian into a narcissistic mental breakdown, the likes of The Shining. Uh, I can only assume that at-home shoots are actually really bad for us now because of what Ian just repeated over and over and over again. <laughs> Ian, you you had the win locked down. You you could have just stayed silent, but you had to berate your coworker <laughs> for, for a minute. I I have to now switch. I ha- this has been just a back and forth tennis match Excuse of logic. <laughs> I have to give the point to Courtney now. Excuse uh, me? Because beh- under uh, Courtney's basis is love and Ian's just turned into hate. And I, I cannot. No. no. <laughs> it's not hate. Ian's not Dude. Courtney dumb. Just putting that, just that clip on Instagram. <laughs> God. 
god. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Yeah, I, I concur on that one, Shane. I think that's a great, a very apt choice. Ian had me on the first half to the point even he didn't even need a rebuttal. You you were convinced as well. Me too. I, I, and then it just I don't know went downhill that... after that. Plus, Courtney did call me uh, handsome, so I gotta appreciate that one as well. Mm -hmm. exactly. Anytime. Bonus exactly. points on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Ian smart, Courtney dumb, Kevin beautiful. Oh, dang. <laughs> I think I'm feeling some bias coming from me, so maybe I have to withdraw my statement. Yeah. All right. Oh. Well, Courtney, Courtney gets the win here. Congrats right. on the W. I concede. <laughs> I concede too. I see that you're a very <laughs> mean boy. Get the f out. <laughs> I think that uh, I think that finishes uh, the debate of this podcast. Uh, what are the points? What are the points? Uh, I think Courtney. Courtney, Courtney has uh, finished it with three. So Courtney in first place with three points. Shane in second place with two points. Ian, one point. Oh my gosh. I was supposed to just be a moderator for this. And I f***ing cleaned Good job. Uh, well, that was that was the end of our debate. <laughs> Good job. That was the end of our debate. Uh, truly some the, the, a battle of wits and minds. Um, it, was, it was a hard fought, hard fought battle. But I think everyone came out um, looking really great. And really Everyone looks so good today. Everyone yeah. looks so good. That's all that yeah, matters. Yeah, we're all dumb, but we look good, and that's what's most important. So, yeah, if you guys, if you guys want to see more of this, let us know. Uh, but before we end, we gotta get to that shoot, dude, dude. Shoot, the shoot, dude. 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 Uh, you can submit your shoot dudes at s h o o t d o o d at smosh dot com. And then for the people who want to suggest, who want more debates, put in the comments what other debate topics you'd want. This one comes from Kaylin Michelle. As many, because of the current situation, I've been working from home, which really means I found myself cleaning more than I ever have. I keep my cleaning supplies in a caddy, which I have out on the floor. My Febreze bottle was on top of another cleaner. When I bent down to get something out of the caddy, I hit my cheekbone against the Febreze bottle. It hurt badly, but I ignored it. Well, it turns out I had bruised my cheekbone from the collision with the Febreze bottle. Yeah, I looked like someone had hit me. Being in a stay-at-home order, I thought I could get away with without having to tell anyone, because who wants to admit such a shoot dude? That was until my coworker questioned my bruise on a work Zoom call. Nothing like having to tell your coworkers and boss you lost a fight with a cleaning bottle. Shoot dude. Aww. S -s -s hold on. She she hit her face. She bumped her face into a Febreze, a plastic Febreze bottle. So well, they have hard. those. They have those metal um, cylindrical ones. The metal cylindrical, like the ones. can, the aerosol can. But yeah. it didn't like. How is it, it? So it was like locked in place so that it wouldn't move. I, I think don't it was know. just. It was just sitting at, like open. In, like, you call in cahoots, like a, Shane? No, I, I, I'm just like I believe it because that's such a weird thing. Yeah, a weird story. Yeah. I'm just curious about the. So I think it's like I think it's like a two tier caddy kind of thing. So she had the Febreze in the top, in the top like yeah. open. It's like one of those like you know those IKEA yeah teal yeah. IKEA things. So there's the top and then there's the bottom. There's a thing on the bottom. She bent down and she bonked her face against the. Dunk. Oh, like okay, so she went downward. Yeah, yeah, she went downward. Got it. Smacked okay. her face oh, on a Febreze bottle. Oof. And have you guys ever had a black eye? I yeah. haven't. I got I got one from playing uh, Spider Tag, which is a game you play on a playground where. Uh, one person is uh, has their eyes closed and they can go anywhere and then everyone else has their eyes open, but they can only stay on the equipment. They can't touch the ground. And you do it like late at night for some reason. That I was an adult. I was an like adult when I was playing this, by the way. And I smacked head first into another person oh, and we both had black fun. eyes. It was great. I don't think I've ever had a black eye, but a bruise. That's crazy, man. That was, you're there they're like, mm -hmm, a Febreze bottle. Okay, tell me if you're home. You're not safe. Yeah, it's always it's always weird having to defend a a black guy and, and yeah. like, I swear it's not domestic abuse. It's it not, that that's, not that that's a it's joke. A not that that's bottle. something funny to laugh about, but it's no. it's true. Like I think we've all been there where it's like, no, I swear, like this is just this is an accident. Yeah. I will say that it's it's a mild shoot dude. I say it's a soft shoot dude. Yeah. Getting bonked yeah, by a Febreze bottle. 
Could have been worse. Because I think if that, if that happened to me, I'd have just been like, oh my God, <laughs> you won't believe what happened. Well, mm-hmm. it. so I've had similar type of shoot dudes to this because I've gotten like, I have a, a burn on my left arm and it's from uh, from uh, some oil that splashed on me when I was cooking salmon. So not that cool, uh, but stuff like that happens. They're like, what is that scar on your arm? Literally, did you like, fight someone? Because it, it looks like it looked like a cigarette burn for a long time. So people thought like, did someone burn you with a cigarette? And I was like, no, I flipped some salmon on a pan and some olive oil splashed <laughs> onto my arm. I once had a tickle fight with a girl and um, and Okay. I was holding onto her hand because I was trying to tickle, you know? And uh, then I let go of her hand when she was like trying to pull away. I let go. Oh. And she smacked herself Think. in the face and gave yeah. herself a black eye. <gasps> oh my God. You gave a woman a black eye? You I didn't horrible, you gave horrible I didn't man. Black she hit herself. You slingshotted her oh, own hand at her face. I know. I can't believe it. Like, you, stop hitting you yourself. S- <laughs> you second, you second, what? Uh, second. Second winded, second hand punched a girl in the face, you bully. Second degree black eye. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I don't have anything, any weird injuries like that. I've only just had like really bad acne on my sc- on my face and I'll put a bandaid over it and people be like, what happened? And you get more attention than you would have with the actual zit. Mm-hmm. Kevin? I don't have any of those. Uh, Lacey though, she's uh, being a, bake- a cake baker, my wife. She burns herself a lot. She's very, very clumsy. Aww. And she burns herself on the oven a lot. And it's usually on her wrist. So if you look at her wrists, she has burn marks all the way down both of them. Oh, and no. she has had people ask her before and like question yeah. be like, Are, is everything okay? Is, oh, is she doing something? I'm like, I'm like, I like, swear to God, it's just burn marks because she's very, very clumsy. Oh my goodness. So, injuries from the cake wars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty much. Exactly God that. Damn. <laughs> Dang. Thank you guys so much for joining the very first Smosh Debates yeah. 2020. Um, if you guys yeah. want more of this, uh, you could suggest uh, you could suggest debate topics. Who you want on? Mm-hmm. Indeed. Um, um, these ones were submitted by our crew. So it'll be really fun to see what you guys uh, post. Yeah, and we wanted to do this because it's it's fun and silly and like, I just speaking from my personal experience, the internet has been causing a lot of like feeling of numbness and just like kind of feeling really down. So mm. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. glad that we can come together. We do get very real on this podcast. Like sometimes it's like, what even is this podcast? We're not a comedy mm-hmm. podcast. We're, we're getting into serious issues. And so sometimes we'll do that, but also sometimes we just want to be something that can provide you some serotonin, some, some laughs because you know at the end of the day that's our main that's our main main it's making people laugh you guys gave me laughs i was i was very much enjoying i was very much enjoying your guys debate yeah. on, this is the uh, most i've last laughed on a pod in a while you guys are ridiculous Love you but guys. skateboard definitely wins yeah, yeah skateboard no i can't best. that was i wasn't ready and also i did skate lab like i was a skateboarder i'm mm. i'm very cool well Ollie. um before before we go i just want to say that we have a new line out it's yeah. the groovy line uh we got some really awesome uh uh clothing Merging that just that just released uh designed by kel lauren a very uh a very talented designer uh, it's really cool. The really cool colors. I think there's uh, some sweaters and some t-shirts and they're just such cool colors, really fun little groovy designs. And I highly encourage you check them out. They're Other really cute. They're very, they, are, they fit very nicely. The, the crew necks are like chef's kiss comfortable. Like, mm-hmm. you know, when some hoodies are crew necks, like the cuff wrist part is like, they're always different. This is the nice, like, uh, comforting, like form fitting ones that I really love. Sorry, they're I not. Yeah, they're not hoodies. They're crew neck sweaters. Right? Crew necks, t shirts, yeah. really cute designs. We've been really excited about them for a while, yeah. like a mm-hmm. while, while. So go check those out and look cute with us. Shane, Courtney, Kevin from Heaven, thank you guys so much for coming on. Mm. And we will see you guys next week. Love you so much. Bye.